Welcome to Surgery Squad's Virtual Caesarean Section. I'm Dr. Jeff, and I'll be guiding you through this surgery today. A caesarean section, commonly referred to as a C-section, is an inpatient procedure where a surgeon makes incisions in a woman's abdomen and uterus to deliver a baby. This procedure is often performed when a physician determines it to be a safer delivery option for the mother, baby, or both. As with any surgery, the use of alcohol and tobacco increases the time it takes to recover, and if the mother has used alcohol or tobacco products during her pregnancy, it can also cause serious birth defects. Our patient today is in her early 30s and is relatively healthy, with exception of a brief history of high blood pressure. Luckily for us, we get the opportunity to deliver her first baby. Now that we've covered the basics, let's scrub in. We'll begin the procedure by inserting an IV into our patient's hand so that we can provide her with any medication and fluids she may need. I've already tied a tourniquet on the patient's upper arm. Can you find a suitable vein in the patient's hand? Looks good to me. Next, we need to sterilize the insertion area using an alcohol wipe. Now that the area is disinfected, it's time to insert the needle and advance the angiocatheter into the vein. Take a stab at it. The small burst of blood that you just saw in the angiocatheter hub is known as a flashback. This lets us know that the angiocatheter is correctly positioned in the vein. Now I'll release the tourniquet. While applying gentle pressure over the vein to collapse it, you can remove the needle. This will reduce the amount of blood that may pour out of the angiocatheter while the needle is removed. Once you remove the needle, I'll properly dispose of it in a sharps container. I'll lock the IV tubing to the angiocatheter by rotating the locking mechanism. And finally, we need to secure the IV with tape and test the IV line. Excellent job! Was it easier than you thought it would be? In order to reduce the amount of discomfort our patient may have, we'll be giving her a spinal anesthesia. This differs from an epidural in that we'll be injecting the anesthetic directly into the spinal fluid that surrounds the spinal cord, and there's no catheter involved. First, clean the area using iodine-based antiseptic solution. Next, we'll inject a local anesthetic to decrease the pain the patient will feel when we inject the spinal anesthetic. So far, so good. Now we need to inject the spinal anesthetic directly into the patient's spine. Now just place a bandage over the injection site and we'll move on. Great! Before we can make any incisions, we need to clean the patient's abdomen with an antimicrobial iodine solution. Now use the scalpel to make the abdominal incisions. As the incisions are made, you'll need to separate the layers of tissue, fat, and muscle. Are you ready? It's getting a little messy in there. Use the suction to clear out some of the excess blood and fluid. Insert the retractor to push down the patient's bladder.
make an incision into the patient's uterus so that we can begin the delivery. Be careful though, we don't want to accidentally injure the baby. We're almost there. Sometimes a surgeon will need to use forceps to help the baby out, but not in this case. The next step is to apply pressure around the baby's head to assist us in removing the baby from the uterus. Before we completely remove the baby from the uterus, Use the suction bulb to suction fluids from the baby's nose and mouth. Now, let's have a baby. Help me remove the baby from the uterus. Excellent, but we're not done yet. Clamp and cut the baby's umbilical cord in order to detach it from the placenta. It's a girl! Congratulations! Our team of nurses will take the baby to be cleaned, weighed, and examined before allowing her mother to hold her. In the meantime, we need to remove the placenta. To finish up, we'll need to close the incision sites. I think we'll go with absorbable sutures instead of surgical staples to reduce discomfort and so that our patient doesn't have to worry about having them removed. You can take it from here. You did an amazing job. Now, the recovery process begins. Since it may take a while for our patient to recover from the surgery, her physician recommended that she plan ahead by getting people to help her with daily tasks, such as grocery shopping, cleaning the house, or yard work. It takes roughly six weeks for the C-section incision to heal, and during this time our patient can expect some fatigue and mild discomfort. It is also recommended that during the recovery period, patients get plenty of rest, drink lots of water, and avoid intercourse. Our patient will need to contact her physician if she experiences any signs of infection, foul-smelling discharge, painful urination, or leg pain or swelling. It is also highly recommended that she contact her physician if she is frequently depressed, as this may be a sign of postpartum depression. 
And that is a C-section. I think you should test your surgical skills in another surgery here on SurgerySquad.com.